Philippines. Your guide and host here, Monique Tuzon, for your weekly recap of major events and newsmakers shaping and running the planet. We kick off with the dual elements of Earth on where we stand and build our homes and water that refreshes, restores, and keeps us alive. Powerful forces that sustain life as much as they take it away when they turn on us. Such as over the weekend when, in the dead of the night, remote villages in south of the Atlas Mountains in Morocco to tourist favorite Marrakesh, the ground shook, shuddered, and cracked, leveling houses of mud, stone, and bricks to the ground, burying thousands in their sleep, trapping people helplessly and hopelessly under slabs of stone, chunks of hardened mud, and debris. As of press time, an estimated 3,000 have reportedly died with even more souls yet to be found while relief aid and trucks and automobiles have begun to trickle in to supplement supplies dropped off from the air. Sadly, it was North Africa that took Mother Nature's wrath and double whammy over the weekend when a 6.8 ground shaker brought death and destruction to the far-flung highlands of Morocco and Storm Daniel dumped what weather forecasters say was eight months worth of precipitation in one day of a hapless eastern town of Derna in Libya. The excess rainfall sent walls of water to wash out entire communities and villages, sweeping automobiles, livestock, and every sort of property out to sea, and drowning thousands seen floating aimlessly far away from their homes or sending them down to the watery graves that eventually dried up for rescuers to recover. Fortunately, and I cannot stress this enough, no Filipino casualty has been officially reported as of yet as a result of this unspeakable calamity. As it has been, the bulk or majority of Filipino migrant workers in Libya are settled in the capital, Tripoli, located in the western part of Libya. Still, officers and staff of the Foreign Affairs Department are working extra time to determine and assure migrant workers' loved ones here at home they are safe and whole. Back in our region in Shoppers Haven of Hong Kong, cars submerged and locals waded through knee-to-waist-deep flooded streets when last Friday record-breaking rainfall drenched the city, causing widespread inundation in the urban jungle. The city's observatory and weather forecasting agency documented an unusually high volume of rainfall of 6.2 inches or 15.8 centimeters at its headquarters each hour leading up to midnight last Friday. But while it was pouring in shoppers' paradise, leaders of one of the most formidable economic alliances on the planet gathered in Jakarta with chiefs of the most developed and powerful nations wanting and getting a seat at the table. And on this world stage, the president yet again stood to thrive and shine as he led the voices against the ongoing and illegal expansion and harassment of rightful nations' owners of maritime territories exercising their sovereignty in the exclusive economic zones. It was a speech that hit to the core and cut to the quick of people's frustrations, yet delivered to an audience of his peers with utmost diplomacy, tact, and respect. Among the heads of the state who attended and listened was India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, leader of the world's largest democracy. And in him, our president and people have found a new ally who shares our existential concern on the South China Sea and supply for the country's staple grain. Even more, India and the Philippines share a notable distinction for having the most sought-after customer service on the planet, the call center industry. And a new software and development in the Bay Area is expected to increase efficiency and reduce turnover, but is feared tear at the diversity and identities of those who provide service. This special report from VOA's news, Matt Dibble. In the global economy, a call to a customer service center will likely be answered by someone in a faraway part of the world. Just bear with me for a moment. Call center workers can train for months to effectively communicate with customers whose native language and culture differ from theirs. I can't try that. Photographer. Photographer. Good. Despite this training, accents often get in the way, says developer Sharath Narayana. There are at least a few instances every single day of his life or her life that they go through some level of discrimination and sometimes straight up abuse. Narayana is a co-founder of California-based Sanus AI whose technology can adjust the way a speaker sounds 
with the goal of making an accent more relatable. A call center worker from the Philippines demonstrated. Hi, my name is Iggy. I'm from Paranaque. Hi, my name is Iggy. I'm from Paranaque. The difference can be subtle, but Narayana says it is helping call center workers avoid abuse. Uh, we are not trying to hide the fact that this person is from India or this person is, is from the Philippines, uh, but this person would sound so clear, so confident and so crisp that the other person would like to have a conversation. Discrimination and abuse by callers are among the factors leading to high turnover among call center workers. Sociologist Anish Anish says tools like SANUS can help reduce the burden on call center agents. Anish, however, worries that it also points to what he says are dehumanizing trends in technology, namely erasing diversity. Most of our communication is mediated through some technology. But when technology starts changing your accent itself, that is transforming you into your own avatar. Now, the driving force is not developing an understanding between human beings, but the driving force is transactional in the sense that things have to get functionally done. Narayana says that of the workers with the optional SANA system installed, 97 percent of them are choosing to use it every day. Because I was able to listen to one of my calls using SANA and wow. It looks like English is my first language, where in, in fact it's not. For now, the AI seems to be helping people connect. Matt Dibble, VOA News, Palo Alto, California. And our recap has come to an end. Here's wishing you all a mighty fine weekend and reminding you to dream big, give thanks, share your blessing, and stay informed till next week when we meet again right here. This is Monique Tuzon for the Global Roundup.